It's the year 2000. My ego, it's way over the top. I had just graduated summa cum laude, 4.0 criminal justice bachelor degree. No one else got better grades than I did. I work very hard every day. I was raised by a family with a strong understanding of hard work, dedication, passion will take you where you want to be. I have proved that myself. I worked very hard, I had a full-time job, and I still graduated top of my class. The world was in my hands. That's what I thought. I got married. I had to put on hold my dreams to become an attorney. I've always wanted to be a lawyer. I have a fascination for the law. I have fascination for the Constitution, for fighting for justice, for helping others understand the complex legal system. There was no way on earth I was not going to be an attorney. That's all I wanted to do. But I married someone from the United States. And I'm from the Dominican Republic. In the United States, they speak English. Yo hablo español. Woohoo! So I didn't, put it to, I didn't put two and two together. I was just excited that I was moving to America. The American dream, it was going to happen to me. I was moving to the United States. I was excited. Summer of 2002. I was eight months pregnant. I was ready to go. My luggage was ready. Resignation letter, done. Goodbye party. Everything was perfect. And I moved to the United States. But not just anywhere in the United States. When you're Dominican, all you know about the United States is New York, Miami. New York, Miami. Well, there was something California. So I was moving to California, the land of Hollywood, UCLA, Stanford University. It was like, wow, that's where I'm going. That's what I thought. So I come to the United States, moved to California, and then reality check happened. I was in another country. Things that were easy to me in Puerto Rico or the Dominican Republic were a nightmare. First, I had to get out of my car to put gas. I never had to do that before. <laughs> Trust me. That was a true learning lesson. You had to learn where you put your credit card. You had to learn where you pull. It's a lot of work. <laughs> and you have to do that even when there's snow or it's cold. <laughs> then you had a dishwasher. I never had a dishwasher before, but I liked it. <laughs> then I had to learn the difference of using dishwasher soap versus using regular soap. Yeah, you get a lot of things in all over the kitchen, and that's why you have to use the right dishwasher. And then you go to McDonald's, Burger King, and all these places, and they ask you, you want super size? Yes, and they give you a soda of the size of your head. <laughs> I never had that before. Those are luxuries for me. But I had to learn to live in America. But I still was going to go to law school. And I knew English, like I spoke what I thought was English. Whether people understand what I said or not, that's different. But I spoke some English. Well, it turned out that for you to go to Stanford or any university in America to study law, you need to know English. That was hard. In addition to that, you need to take an exam called the LSAT. Law School Administration Test. Oh, yes. Remember, I graduated 4.0. I'm top of my class, and I'm ready to rock that exam. Except for the fact that I didn't speak English enough to take that exam. So I sat down, and I have no idea what I was reading. It was difficult. I had to translate from English to Spanish, from Spanish to English to look at the questions and the answers and trying to figure out what the heck they were talking about. There were thousands of words I had no idea. And then, all of a sudden, time is up. What the heck? 
I'm not even halfway of the exam. How can time be up? So I failed badly. I got 128 points. That's really low. But I come from a family of high performers, and I was ready to go, and I was not going to give up. I started taking classes, and I was, I'm going to do this. And then someone told me, you know, you have a really hard accent. Accent, what is an accent? This is how I talk. I couldn't relate to what it means to have an accent because I've never been told that I had an accent before. What does that even mean? Do I really have an accent? Don't you understand what I'm talking? Well, no, people didn't understand everything that I said. And I never had to write in English. I never had to, like, take an exam in English, much less a law school administration exam. But I wanted to be an attorney. I've always wanted to fight for justice. I always wanted to help people to understand the complex legal system. I was told, why don't you just give up that idea and do something else? Do something else. I wanted to be a lawyer just because I moved from one place one country to another doesn't mean I now have to give up my dreams of becoming an attorney. I was told I was too ambitious. I was an immigrant woman, new to America, with heavy accent. I didn't speak English, yet I wanted to be an attorney which means I was supposed to be reading a lot of books, writing a lot of memos, briefs, and talking to a jury every day, a judge, and talking in English. I don't know how that was going to happen, but I was going to be a lawyer. So I continued studying hard, learning English. I had a book, a notebook. I had to write down the words in English, translations in Spanish, and I have to work really, really hard every day, not only to learn how to take this exam, but also to learn the words so that when I sit down in the exam, I could go as fast as possible, I can understand every question, I can answer them, and I can get the grades that I needed in order to go to law school. Because that 4.0 alone didn't mean anything. So there I go, ready for the battle. I was so excited. That day, it was my daughter's um, baptism. So I was doing two big things at the same time. My daughter's baptism, and I was taking the LSAT for the second time. I was so sure I was going to pass. I was ready to kill it. And there I was. I sat down in an exam, go, whew, again. Hard words, hard questions. Slow, time is passing really fast. I don't understand. These are not English words. These are hard freaking words. <laughs> <sighs> Your time is up. My time is up. I'm not even halfway. How am I going to get into law school if I cannot pass this exam? Someone tell me, well, why are you worrying about the exam? Why don't you worry about the actual law school? Wait. Let's do things one step at a time, okay? Let's focus on the exam, then we worry about law school, okay? <sighs> I was sad. I was frustrated. I failed again, miserably. I never finished the exam. I cried. I was ready to give up again. I wanted to move back. I didn't want it to be in the United States. I didn't know how long it was going to take me to learn English. I didn't know how long it was going to take me to pronounce some words. Jesus, the word chip, C-H-I-P, and the word chipping, ship, and the word chip of the little animal, they all sound the same to me. Ship, chip, ship. <laughs> do not, do not try to tell me that they are pronounced different. It's chip, ship, ship. <sighs> It was so hard. I wasn't ready to fail again. I didn't know what was going to happen. 
I study every day. I work hard, continue working, still translated from English to Spanish, from Spanish to English. I wasted so much time trying to understand things because I needed to translate it in my head first because I still was thinking in Spanish and I'm really good at Spanglish. <laughs> and I don't even notice when I do that. But that was the only way to go to law school. So I sat down in the exam for the third time. For the third time in my life, I worked very hard, day and night. I took English classes. I tried to learn. I tried to understand words. I had books. I translated over and over and over. And I practiced all crazy words that I've never heard in my life, that I never had to use in my life before, from English to Spanish, from Spanish to English, so that I could go as fast as possible to that exam for the third time. My daughter was a baby. I was sad. At my new job, someone told me, your English is good. It's just not enough. Do something else. Again, you're going to tell me to do something else? Don't you understand that my life mission is to become an attorney, is to help people understand the complex legal system. I want to fight for justice. If I have to go back to the Dominican Republic or Puerto Rico, I'll go back. But I have to become an attorney. This is, what I, this is all I wanted to do in my life. I don't want to do something else. Why do I have to give up? Well, perhaps because you don't speak English. Well, can I learn English? Can I actually learn not just English? Because I knew English. How, I swear I knew English. Okay? But I needed to learn English sufficient enough to pass the exam. And there I go. I decided to be smart. Let me just have a meeting at Stanford, explain to them that I can't pass that exam, show them that I have 4.0 GPA, and see, they just let me go in. Because I'm that good, right? It didn't work. <laughs> it was a nice meeting. They were very nice. The school was beautiful. But they said I needed to get a lot higher. Say, well, your GPA is really good, but we will need you to get at least 165 with a really nice essay. And you need to have a laptop. I, from everything that they said, I still remember I needed to have a laptop. Remember, this was back in the time where not everybody had a laptop, and it was a big deal. It's like, I'm going to get my own laptop to go to law school. This is great. So there I go for the third time, and I sat down in the exam. It was brutal. It was the hardest thing in my life. I worked so hard every day, nights, afternoons, mornings. I study not just the concept of the exam, but also how to take that type of exams. In addition, I also study English and Spanish and Spanish to English in order to do the exam as fast as possible. And my time was up. My time was up. It was time to go home.